What's up guys, it's Andy Felicotti and welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to show you what settings I change when I get a new camera, specifically the Canon EOS R. So if you just picked up one of these cameras, you're in the right place. Now the first thing I do when I always get a camera is update the firmware. For example, on the Canon EOS R, the latest firmware has added improvements to the eye autofocus system. So if you wanna get the most out of your camera, you definitely wanna update your firmware. So now I'm gonna dive into the settings that I actually change on the camera itself. So let's dive into the menu. And the first thing I disable is always the beep. Uh, this is definitely a user preference, but I just hate when the camera beeps when it's in focus. And that is on the settings menu on the number three on the EOS R. So we're just gonna change the beep to disabled. Now this seems obvious, but I also changed the image quality to raw. If you're not using raw photos on your camera, you're definitely not getting the full potential out of your photos. And that's on the first settings page. Now the next setting we're gonna do is on the third page of this shooting menu. And this is changing the minimum shutter speed. It's in the ISO speed settings. And the very bottom, you'll see minimum shutter speed. Now on the bottom, you'll see it's set to auto, but you can pick if you want it to be faster or slower. Now I knocked this setting up one notch. And the reason I do that is because I want a little bit faster shutter speed. Obviously you can play with this setting, but uh, for my needs, I found that this is the best. I've just noticed that my photos will come out a little sharper if the shutter speed is a little bit faster. Now I also shoot time lapses on this camera using the built-in function. I really love it. It takes 4K time lapses and it's super simple. You just set it and forget it pretty much. But I noticed by default, the ISO will go extremely high, so you'll get really grainy time lapses. But there's actually a setting to set the amount of ISO that you want it to go to maximum. So if you just go over to uh, the video modes, so I'm switching to video now, and that same ISO speed setting menu now has uh, more options. And you can see it has a max ISO setting for the time lapses. Setting it to 400 will give you a lot less grain and make your time lapses look a lot more crisp. Now the next setting we're gonna change is in the autofocus four setting menu and it's the AF assist beam firing. Now what this is is the little light that turns on when you are trying to autofocus. So by default, when you hit the shutter down halfway, a little light will turn on and I just found that to be really annoying. Now the next setting we're gonna change is in the playback three settings page, the first option, playback information display. And you'll see that this option lets you pick what shows up when you're reviewing your photos. So for example, if you don't need the giant display of your photo, you can turn that off and you can kind of pick what settings are really important for you. Now also in this playback menu, you'll see a magnification option and I love picking actual size. Now what this will do is allow you to review your photos and right when you hit magnify, it'll go 100% in and you can check the focus instantly. So if you find yourself uh, hitting review and then zooming in every time you're trying to check focus on your photos, this will just set it so right when you uh, review your photos and hit magnify, it'll just instantly zoom in on your photo. Now when I'm using my camera, I basically only use the live view screen on the back. I don't use the viewfinder at all. So you can actually turn off the viewfinder completely by going to the settings menu four and you'll see display settings. And uh, by default, it'll be uh, on auto, but you can change it to manual. And what this will do is actually disable the little tr sensor here so the screen won't turn on automatically. You can also map a button to toggle between these two. So I actually set up one of these buttons to go quickly between the viewfinder. Also in the settings manual, you'll find shooting info display and then screen info settings. And uh, this turns off and on uh, different view settings when you're uh, scrolling through on your live view. So for example, I don't ever use this view uh, on my screen, so I turn that off, just so it'll give you less things to, to cycle through. But for example, for me, I love using the uh, level feature, so I keep that on, but if you don't use that, you can turn that off using this. Now this next setting is specific to the Canon EOS R, but it's the changing the controls of the touch bar. Uh, I think when I first got this camera, the touch bar was actually completely disabled. So this is actually where you can change the settings of how it works. Um, you just go to the cu custom functions uh, settings, the operation menu, and you'll see uh, customize the function bar. And so for example, for me, I have it so I can cycle through autofocus settings. Um, but you can pick any setting you want here. And you can also enable or disable the touch bar safety feature. So by default, I think you have to hold your finger for like three seconds on it to actually enable the touch bar. I found that to be really annoying. So I just turned off all the uh, safety features for that. And I actually mapped the lock button to the touch bar. So whenever I want to change my focus menus, I just hit lock and it unlocks the touch bar and I can change the focus menu. And then I just hit lock again and then I'll be set on that focus menu and I won't accidentally hit the touch bar. And also in the settings menu, you'll find custom 
customize buttons. For some reason, by default, the arrows to move the focus point around is disabled, and here is actually where you can change that setting. So you can see here, I have direct AF point selection change, and this allows me to, while I'm focusing, I can hit the arrows up and down, and it'll move the focus point around. And lastly is one thing I neglected on a lot of cameras I got, but now I do it on every camera I have, um, is actually set up your own favorites menu. So most cameras, the last setting menu is actually a favorites menu. And you can see, for example, here, I have a time-lapse movie options, like I have that beam firing option, uh, Wi-Fi options, format card options. And this is obviously gonna depend on what you like to do on your camera, but I definitely recommend spending a few minutes and setting up your own favorites menu so you can quickly access the functions that you use in your camera the most. Now, if you're a video shooter using the Canon EOS R, I highly recommend customizing the third shooting mode for video settings. Uh, so actually you can register any uh, shooting mode that you like. I have um, shutter priority, for example, for me. What your camera is actually gonna do when you hit the record button is it's gonna default to that third custom setting. For example, you could be shooting um, in aperture priority and then you can quickly hit uh, record and it's automatically gonna to go to that setting that you select there. And for me, it's shutter priority and it'll have the uh, shutter set to a specific frame rate and everything like that. This made it extremely easy to swap between video mode and photo mode. And that's why I love this camera so much. And that's it. That's all the settings I changed on the Canon EOS R when I first got it. And I hope this uh, video taught you something new about your camera as well, especially if you have the Canon EOS R, obviously. If this video was helpful, remember to like and subscribe. And uh, thanks again for watching. See you guys.